All right, so my session is done. I'm going to now introduce to you Bill Carmody. He's our CMO, advisory CMO, and he's going to talk about uh, some of the best strategies in terms of sales and marketing. So Bill, please come up. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Uh, as Rod said, I'm Bill Carmody, I'm the CMO, uh, advisory CMO for SAM, and uh, I'm going to be talking to you about the uh, ebook that you all just received in your inbox while we were talking up here. And uh, so that's part of the automation process, right? So we have to do that work ahead of time. Um, so just to give you a little background, this ebook came as a direct result of an outreach effort that Rod and I did. Uh, to our larger community. So what we did is we actually surveyed over 500 successful CEOs and we asked them their best sales and marketing tactics. What are the things that are driving their business and how is it working for them? And so these sort of top 10 lists came directly from those insights. And uh, we actually published an ink article about this and actually linked that ink article to all 500 quotes that we received. So if you're interested in that, that there's a link in the actual ebook as well. So, what are the top 10 most impactful sales and marketing tactics? The first one is not surprising if you've read anything about Simon Sinek, start with why. This is by far the number one thing we heard from everybody we talked to, which is purpose, right? What is your mission? What's your purpose? And really, if you're looking to authentically connect with your customers, it comes down to shared values. What are the shared values that you and your customers share? What are the reasons that they should believe in your uh, vision, your purpose, and what you're setting out to do. Because if, if it's just another commodity, then, then you can't charge a premium and there's really no long-term viability of your business, right? So this idea of having that sense of purpose and then explaining that purpose everywhere you have touch points, whether it's your website, email marketing, any type of uh, marketing collateral, really reinforce why you're in business and what you're doing. And it can't be just to make money, because that, that no one cares about that, right? This has to be something that's greater than yourself. The second thing is then to engage your team, because these are your biggest advocates. So everyone says that the customers come first, but in truth, if your employees aren't the first priority of your business, you're not gonna scale. They're the first line of defense. They're the first people that your, your customers are talking to. If your team doesn't get it, then they're not able to sort of take your message out to the world. And so that's the number two most important thing is first, if you have a mission and purpose, make sure your team can actually articulate what that is have a, an opportunity for them to tell you what they think the mission and purpose is. Hear it and understand it and massage it because this is going to be whether or not that mission and purpose permeates through your entire organization or stops with the mission statement of your company website, right? Number three is to clearly identify your ideal customer. Again, this seems like it's a no-brainer, but when you really get down to it, most businesses struggle because they try to be everything to everybody. And the minute you can sort of laser sharp focus and say, here's who we really care about. All these other people are ancillary, and if they buy from us, great. But ultimately, I know exactly who my ideal customer is and what their pain point is. If you can understand that, then it's going to make your job as a sales marketer much, much easier because you're speaking to them in their language and you're talking about the very things they care about. The next thing is to then take and map your customer's journey. So once you identify exactly who your ideal customer is, you want to see exactly how they first find out about you, awareness, how they become engaged with your business, how they transact with you, and then how they will basically become advocates for your business. Do you realize this is one of the biggest competitive advantages in the market today, and less than 30% of businesses actually map their customer's journey? So in this room, if everyone raise your hand, who's actually mapped their customer's journey? Okay, there we go, there's your 30%, right there, right? And so that's the point. So if you look around, all the people who didn't raise their hands, you know it's important. It's an important part of your business. It will help you grow substantially, but the vast majority of people don't do it. If it's for me, tell them on stage. <clears throat> then number, four, number five is to create that irresistible offer. Now, what's an irresistible offer? What is that, right? An irresistible offer is something that you literally can't say no to. So for example, how did I get 500 people to respond to my request for their insights? Did I come on and say, hey, we're doing a survey, we'd like you to participate? No. My irresistible offer was easy. I said, hi, I write for Inc. Magazine. I'm going to be doing a story on the best sales and marketing tactics. If you'd like to submit your quote, I will put it into my, my article. How does that sound? That's an irresistible offer. It didn't cost me anything, except for a little bit of time, and I have amazing value. By the way, is that not the best way to open a door and have a future conversation not about the article? 
See, that's an irresistible offer. The ability to basically give money back guarantees, the ability to sort of say, I, I guarantee your satisfaction. These are things that are important, but when you go all the way through, it's they literally can't say no. So if you don't have an irresistible offer, you really want to spend time on what more could we do for our prospects to ensure that we have something they cannot say no to. So the way I would be able to validate that is what's your close ratio? You know, if I can talk to 100, 100 customers and 60% or more say absolutely yes, then I have an irresistible offer. If I got 3 to 5%, it's not irresistible. Does that make sense? So big picture awareness with big, uh, big data. So here's the one thing. Most people are really, really, they understand what big data is, but they don't know how to access it. And so the thing is, everybody in this room knows what big data is. The question I would ask is, by a show of hands, how many people are actively using big data to drive their decisions today? One, two, three, four, five. Great. So in a room of, what, 50 people, we got like five people that actually are using big data on a day-in and day-out basis. The reason isn't because you don't think that there's value here. The reason is because the tools tend to be too expensive. So we're going to talk a little bit about how you can access those tools and be able to use big data more efficiently. That's actually one of the reasons why I got in partnership with, with Roz was because when I thought about sort of sales and marketing in the future, it's all about automation, which we'll talk about that in a second, but it's also all about artificial intelligence. Being able to have a system that learns what you do every day and be able to sort of predict what you need, that's really the power of big data. But if you don't have a data scientist sitting in your back office crunching numbers, then having all the data in the world doesn't matter. You need a system and process that's going to help take that information and make it actionable. That's the power of big data. And that also leads me right to the next one, number seven, the power of marketing automation. So for marketing automation, just like I said, so we're sitting here in this conference. I want every single person to have a copy of this ebook. I don't want to go run out and send an email to everybody. Hey, thanks for coming to the conference. Really appreciate your help. You'll get that anyway. But we already designed that months ago. And we already set it up so that the triggering event was as soon as we got on stage, you guys all got that ebook. We didn't have to do that, right? And that was easy for us to be able to facilitate. And what it does is it sort of reinforces the fact that everybody that came to the conference gets the takeaway, right? That's the power of marketing automation. Being able to sort of have a, a, a consistency of here's the value we can continue to deliver to our clients, very important. And then the affinity and the persona of your prospects. So understanding exactly who you're talking to before you talk to them. Another one of the reasons it really attracted me to the Sam.ai platform was the idea that when you enter in a contact's email address, everything we know about that contact automatically populates. In partnership with Dun & Bradstreet and some of the other folks, we have third parties out there that allow us to go access everything you ever want to know about a prospect. That's important because before I talk to you, I want to know what you're interested in. I want to know the last thing you tweeted. I want to know what you're posting on LinkedIn. I want to know what you had, what job you had before you're in this role. And I also want to know what are the things that you care about. Like, what do you love sports? Do you have children? You know, all the things that I can find out on social media, what if it was always gathered there for me? Now I can have much more interesting, relevant conversations. That's why the affinities and personas are so important. And then just outbound, understanding the best practices in running outbound sales using email campaigns. Email is not sexy, but it's very effective. And so essentially, it's one of those things where if you don't have a newsletter, you aren't using email effectively, you're missing out on a lot of the opportunities for growth. So again, a lot of stuff was, you know, in, in back in 95, 96, email was the big thing, right? It was one-on-one -on -one marketing, let's go do it. Ah. Now we actually have the ability to do true one-on-one -on -one marketing with big data combined with email marketing. And so the vision of Peppers and Rogers one-to-one -one marketing is finally realized. It took 17 years to get there, but you know, now that we're here, we're able to actually do this stuff, and it's amazing. And then, of course, leapfrogging with artificial intelligence. That's exactly why we're here, right? We're talking about this because the future of sales and marketing is artificial intelligence. Because when you have a machine that can actually learn from the things you do, analyze your campaigns, tell you in real time where you're falling behind and your competitors are catching up, predict what your sales are going to be based on previous trends, the ability to sort of send out reports when you need them before you even ask for them, and then soon, coming in 2018, to be able to say, hey Sam, the same way you say, hey Siri, 
Can you tell me exactly what kind of sales uh, challenges I'm going to be seeing this year? Like, tell me who's my best performing salesperson. Tell me who's my worst performing salesperson. Tell me who's the prospect that I've ignored that I probably should be able to close out this month. I mean, having a conversation with the machine is our future. So the idea is, well, how do you do that? What's the best way to approach it? That's what's exciting to me, because when you look at the 5,300 marketing technology solutions that exist today, very few of them are powered by uh, artificial intelligence. And that's one of the things why I'm a, a marketing advisor for Sam. And so without that, I'm going to wrap this up and bring, oh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't know if we have time. Yeah, no, we have five minutes. We can ask more questions. Our company does research on painfully aware of what that process is like when it comes to actually getting participants. What you advise would be to work with the company in the new process? It can. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's okay. They're same brand. They're both uh, owned by Masuda Ventures. It's all good. We would probably be like burned as a state if we put out that offer of 500 people would be quoted. They would come to us and go, where's my quote? Mm -hmm. Did you have to deal with that? That's a great question. So what we did is we clearly identified we're going to take the best ones and put it in the content of the actual ink article, but we linked to all 500. So basically, when you go to the ink article, and I can pull it up and show you, we have 50 quotes, which is still a lot. We have 50 of the best quotes that are representative of all 500, and then for those people who did make the 50, there was a link at the very top of the article that said, look, we couldn't account cover everybody in this article. If you want to see exactly what people said, click this link and you can see the entire, all 500. And so that also helps with people being able to then type in their name or their company and see what they were, what they said, as well as sort of referral business when people said, hey, I was quoted a name, here's how you go take a look at that quote. Right? And in the future, we'll do this in a more segmented basis, but for now, we were just trying to get this report out, and so we wanted to get as much insight as quickly as possible, which is why we did it that way. Great question. Any other questions before we move on to our panel? No? Okay, great. So 